My name is Mark Chandler, and I'm a, a scientist at NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies and at Columbia University in the city of New York. Um, the uh, Goddard Institute for Space Studies is one of NASA's primary climate modeling centers. One of the main focuses of our institute is to build large computer models that simulate all of the Earth's climate systems. So a computer climate model is, in some sense, an encyclopedia of the Earth written in computer code. We're really trying to simulate everything in the Earth's system. I mean, that's the eventual goal. In our case, the result of our computer program is a simulation of the Earth, which can be visualized as well in terms of um, maps of the Earth's um, uh, temperature, maps of the Earth's uh, precipitation fields, and 900 other potential variables as well. The models that you use in your curriculum are also computer programs but they tend to be fairly simple programs that are intended to illustrate the relationship between one or two input variables and one or two output variables because the purpose of those models is to illustrate very specific points. Our models are intended to actually simulate the entire Earth system in all of its complexity. So why do we build these complex models then? We are very confident that we understand the basics and we really don't even need the models to actually get, have a basic understanding of the fact that greenhouse gases um, actually trap heat in the atmosphere and that if we're putting a lot more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, they're going to trap a lot more heat and the planet's going to warm up. By simulating things like the ice ages or times in the way, way past that were much warmer than today, we can actually get a handle on whether or not these climate models are realistic enough to use to predict the future. If we understand how the Earth has changed in the past when uh, things like greenhouse gases actually uh, were changing naturally, then we feel that we all have a much better understanding uh, as to how the Earth will change in the future when greenhouse gases are changing naturally plus changing due to the fact that humans are putting in lots more of these various types of compounds into the atmosphere. It's not to say that the Earth has never experienced these huge levels of greenhouse gases. The Earth has had many, many times in its past when it's been more greenhouse gases in much warmer climates. But it's never happened on such a rapid pace as it's happening right now. Within a hundred years, we're going to put enough greenhouse gases into the atmosphere such that we'll be at levels that the Earth hasn't experienced in 50 million years. That's a scary prospect. So our confidence in the models is based on how well it matches paleoclimate in terms of how well they respond to very large changes in greenhouse gases. But um, another major way of testing the models is how well they do for what we would call modern climate, but what we really mean by modern climate is, say, the climate from the late 19th century up to the present day. The climate models are actually extremely good at reproducing the types of climate changes that have occurred over the last century or century and a half, um, particularly in the areas of, of temperature. We need a lot better understanding, probably from climate models, as to how all the details work. And institutes like ours will continue to try to improve the models to make them more capable of getting the details correct. We'll use the climate models to try to give us better information on uh, exactly what is going to occur and so what do we need to adapt to. But let's also um, now, let's not waste another 30 years because um, we have to stop this um, before it gets to the point where nobody can adapt to it.